Welcome to the Importance of Online Branding and Professionalism panel. We'd like to introduce our host, Topher Davila. Uh, welcome to our uh, first solid online panel for the uh, extension of the full-time creative work on a part-time uh, uh, panel that we've been doing at Comic-Con for about a dozen years and WonderCon for like seven or eight years. And we're now moving into doing uh, a lot of our own content online. So welcome. The uh, uh, a big part of the full-time, uh, what I in short terms call the full-time part-time panel is that there's a lot that there's a lot to talk about. So we're going to start uh, differentiating our conversations into more specific topics to spend more time on the important stuff. Ergo, the uh, importance of online branding and professionalism that we're talking about now. So I'm going to be doing as little talking as uh, I can on this because the people that uh, we've got here are, um, they're experts on that. They're going to know so much more than I, than I will uh, or most people will. Um, I started to give you just, just so that you watching can can kind of know the value of who, of who we're who I'm lucky enough to get. Um, I, I started half joking about I don't know, maybe about five or six years ago that if if I came to the panel at this point and wanted to be on it, I wouldn't have enough experience or expertise to be on it at this point with the people that we have. So they're all that good. So we're going to start off with uh, the first one. Let's. Uh, Let's just go down the line with uh, introductions. Uh, Sean? Thanks, Topher. Uh, my name's Sean Glumis. I'm an Adobe Education Leader, so I advocate for the Adobe Creative Cloud in education. Um, I've been a comic book letter for the past 25 years now. Work for Marvel, DC, a lot of image work and independent work out there. And um, my real full-time day job is working education uh, I have a company called 2CPR Group, and we do a lot with all the digital media stuff. So that's why I'm on the Adobe side of the house. Um, one of the things I think we're going to talk about today that I really want to kind of set the tone is consistency. So having a consistent look, feel, message that you have when you're building your online brand and being professional. You'll see, um, we'll pull up a few websites here today, too, just as examples and things like that. But you'll see if you go look for my stuff, I'm easy to find. I'm the only pe person in the world with my name. So if you Google me, you'll see the same photos. I'm actually wearing the same shirt that I wear in the photos that I think Luke took of me like four or five years ago at Comic-Con. So I use it over and over again uh, for my Twitter account, my Facebook account, anything that I do. So I try to keep a very consistent look and feel. So um, that's probably my number one thing is be consistent in your message. And we'll elaborate on that as we go on here. So, hey everybody, Dr. Rena Walzinger. Um, I've been the president and owner of Renzone Music and Productions for 25 years. And right now we're really busy being that we're inside and, and uh, people are looking for branding. So I'm gonna talk about quickly three big branding projects that I'm working on. Um, one is I just became the principal editor for the uh, full length feature uh, documentary on Richard Rush. He was, you guys don't even know that, this just happened. Um, he directed the stuntman and so we're interviewing all of the stars from the 60s and 70s that were in that film. And um, it's again, thanks to Sean being an Adobe person, editing in Premiere. So moving, I spent the last two days moving three terabytes of data over <laughs> to Premiere. Um, yeah, it's crazy. So um, that's, we're gonna be uh, doing, we're doing a lot of branding consistent with the look of the stuntman. So look up that movie, um, another branding, project I'm working on is Verify Viper, which is a product that's a, um, it's a computer program that helps people identify skills and jobs. It's something that um, a lot of uh, clients that I work with have asked for. So I've been working on this for a couple of years and we're branding that, actually hiring out it um, because uh, it's just busy time for logo and some other things, website. It's just a big, it's a big project. Um, there's like 200,000 fields in it so far. It's crazy. And then um, my third one, um, I'm doing uh, Folklore Bites. And so this is one of the things I'm going to talk about if we have time later is about taking this opportunity being at home and not committing to do more learning. So I'm spending some time in After Effects 
creating some really fun art for our opener and closers for that show right now. And um, I can hire out as well, but it's also a good opportunity to learn and get better at branding. So it's a little bit about me. Thank you. Uh, Gene, you're up. I'm Gene Turnbull, and I'm the founder and station manager of the world's only full-time geek and pop culture radio station, Krypton Radio at kryptonradio.com. We have been on the air for about 11 years now. And uh, I'm also the editor in chief. And uh, because we have a, well, pop, pop, pop. Sorry about that. I've got to close Discord. Uh, I'm also, <laughs> I'm also the editor in chief of uh, the website. And that's, that may seem like an odd thing for a radio station, but what we do is we publish articles every day and uh, uh, this attracts uh, readers to the website and then the readers stay and become listeners. So um, yeah, so as an editor, I've uh, written about 1.4 million words on the website by itself. That's, uh, that's about the equivalent of 18 full length novels. <laughs> Anyway, um, yeah, so I also uh, designed our own, our website. Uh, I did all the graphic design as well. Um, I managed the branding for the entire operation, as well as our new venture, Helium Beach, which is our publishing imprint. Okay, uh, James and Luke, separately you guys can go, but you can whoever wants to go first can go i i'll jump on this first my name is jim fry james fry and i am one of the co-founders and the editor-in-chief of the conguy.com website you can see the shirt right here and um we have had this website and, and i'm gonna throw it to luke in just a second luke's our our, our social media and video and graphics uh director for the website so we um we've been around for about four years and what we're going to talk about a little bit today is like um, the importance of keeping the branding online, making sure the branding is everywhere because uh, we're a fan website. We're about the um, Comic-Con experience, about the, the Comic-Con universe. And then we also have a series of, we have some podcasts and things. And the, uh, about a year and a half after we started Con Guy, we started a second website called The Scare Guy. And so we're going to talk a little bit uh, about how to differentiate between your brands when you have two brands online, how to make them both pop stay alive, and then kind of what we learned during this the COVID shutdown, um, how our websites have really been our the lifeblood of what our brand is. Uh, since we're not visiting conventions, we're not out there, so we're kind of having to live through the, the website right now, but you know what? It's a, it's a great learning experience. So anyways, so this is the con guy. You can see the card right there. I'm also, by the way, I'm also the face on the card. <laughs> All right, I'll pitch it over to Luke. Yeah, I'm Luke Cheeseman. I'm director of media with theconguy.com and thescareguy.com. And yeah, it's been a great thing that we've done. And what I, you know, just encourage if you're looking to do kind of like web or looking to kind of do online marketing stuff is just make it fun. Make it something you'd be interested in, the type of content that you'd want to go after and you'd want to see. So I think we've attracted other people in to come help us with this and be part of it because we've just made it fun and we're kind of making it something that they want to be involved with that they were already fans and into. And before, wait, also, Topher, you kind of really undersold yourself because we know this group from the other panel called Full-Time Creative Work on a Part-Time Schedule. And it's something that myself and Luke, we are screenwriters and we're also fans of Comic-Con. So we are trying to make that our full-time work as we both have full-time jobs. Topher, you have managed to make that your full-time job, your passion. So you are an expert in this field and in branding. And so I, I don't think you should undersell yourself. By the way, Rena, congratulations. That was cool news that you just- Oh, heard. thanks. <laughs> All right. Okay, so uh, our spinoff today is, the, uh, is online branding and professionalism. Let's go in reverse order with some, uh, uh, one person initiates with whatever they wanna talk about, then we'll do a round table, jump in, talk. Uh, Let's go in reverse order. Jim and Luke, you guys are up up front. What have you got? Did you have something, Luke? Your, your mic's off. Looks there like you. I was muted. Okay. 
Um, I'm back on now, but I think a good question to kind of start out is like, what's the best way to market yourself? Like what are different sites or web type thing? Like, like, cause a lot of, there's so many social media type things. I just want to know what the panel thinks is the best way to kind of market yourself in the current day and age. Uh, Tumblr is not worth your time. <laughs> uh, Does that still exist? I was going to say, yeah, it still exists. Not worth your time. It's not worth your time. <laughs> yeah, nobody, nobody markets anything on Tumblr, or <laughs> at least not that I've seen. Uh, and nobody goes there looking to find interesting new things other than funny stories or funny pictures, and that's it. Uh, Twitter, of course, is still fantastic, uh, a fantastic venue, but difficult to work with. And uh, Facebook is as well, uh, probably the single most dominant marketing arena uh, in the world online right now is Facebook, but it's got its own problems. Um, of the two, I think Facebook is probably the more useful, at least it is for, for Krypton Radio, because mm -hmm. when we post something, it's sticky and you can find things easily. You can go to somebody's uh, you can go to somebody's page and, uh, and there's, you can see everything they've done in the last several months. And that's not always true of Twitter. Uh, and they have recently relaxed a restriction that was giving us nightmares. You would post something and then you'd cross post it to other groups. And if you did it too fast or did it too many times a day, they would put you in Facebook jail. I've been in Facebook jail for weeks at a time. Yeah, so have I. Really? Wow. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so have I for doing nothing more than sharing my stuff. Yeah. Uh, and apparently, this is now lifted. They're not doing that anymore. Well, that's good uh, to know. Yeah. And the way I found out was uh, I accidentally got... Uh, they have this new version of, of the, the Facebook interface that uh, that's all slick and web 2.0 and all of that. And it sucks. It stinks. <laughs> but one of the things it does do is when you go to share your post, it presents a continuously scrolling list of every group that you could possibly ever post it to. Instead of you having to uh, type in the search box to search for the group name, you just got a list and you hit just hit, hit all the buttons. You could hit a hundred buttons and they won't penalize you now. Uh, and and uh, as short a time as two months ago, if you did more than uh, you did more than twenty in a day, you were you were on park for a week. Yeah. I agree. So that, that dynamic has changed a lot. And it's a good thing because uh, paying for ads on Facebook, unless you're selling, unless what you have to sell is a physical object and commonly desirable, like, I don't know, wristwatches or tire gauges or something like that, uh, advertising on Facebook is not worth the money. You will not get your return on investment doing it. Uh, so the best way, yeah, the best the best way of doing your advertising is to grow your social, grow your social space and sort of move in there and live there, yeah, and and build your uh, build your community around yourself using Facebook as a platform, mm -hmm. and then that way they'll share your stuff a thousand times a day, yeah, and and you won't have to pay a penny. Okay, so um, someone else got a got a response to Luke's prompt.
Is to... it there? Does anyone know? Um, the, I've only vaguely read about it. The sort of breakdown, does the the market the breakdown of who uses what? Like I know, I like I had heard that Facebook is 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 moving towards Gen X and older, whereas Instagram was twenty five, thirty, and younger. And I I, I don't I, I this this could not be true, which is why I'm asking the room. Does anyone know the actual layout of who? of what markets actually tend to follow what social media uh, companies? You're, you're not far off. I mean, you are pretty accurate. Facebook ages older, Instagram is younger. The youngest is now TikTok, which is something I- Yeah, we well, gotta get in that. Yeah, they Jim's say we gotta get into dancing. Yeah, but it's, yeah, TikTok's mostly just dancing videos. So I'm not so sure that's exactly gonna be helping a lot of people's business, but um, yeah, I think I think you're right. And for us, like uh, just like what Sean was saying, just to tag on there is um, the, the thing that's so important for us because if we got to think about the con guy as more than just a website, you know, the con guy is a brand. And so if you want to develop your brand, you have to be consistent on um, Facebook, the website, Twitter, Instagram, and I don't think we're going to hit TikTok maybe somebody will change my mind, but I, I don't see us dancing so much, but you know, it is hard. It's kind of hard to, and not every message goes on every, every platform either. And, um, and the thing that's also important for us is because we do have two brands that we're trying to, to promote. And since I'm here, this is the scare guy branding. And we want to keep that very different than the con guy. And sometimes I'll be honest with you. Sometimes we mush them up and it, it's uh, it's it's something we're always having to fight because we have different social media platforms for two different brands, but well, it's only still similar in design, but yeah. different still with colors and kind of some of the looks and things. Yeah, and Luke's kind of done a great job of kind of keeping every the branding. Like if we're talking about online branding, the branding very distinct but similar. Like they live in the same world, they're brothers of each other, but they have to be very distinct. So that's that's kind of a hard thing to do, but it's very necessary. We haven't yet put con guy on LinkedIn, but both Luke and I are both on LinkedIn and I link over to the con guy. So we'll see. Okay. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to go to Rena right now. Cause she didn't get to talk last time <laughs> we had, we all got together. So I want to make sure Rena gets in. So you got to, uh, you got something to share Rena? Sure. And you guys had another question you wanted to talk about too, but I'm just going to talk for a minute about, uh, YouTube and TikTok since since I do music we do use those yep. and what I've done is um, shared pieces of video with people who have subscribers on TikTok so we have a much larger I think I quadrupled our audience by doing that and so um, they'll they'll share pieces and so both YouTube and TikTok have been huge this year um, huge growth for our products and um, which is exciting because not that it'll work out, but the Grammys, I'm involved in the Grammy nomination process as a, I'm a voting member of the Recording Academy. So we'll be at, get to throw our songs in there and see what happens. Um, so it is oh. nice to have that bigger base. And, and I use Facebook groups. I wanted to mention that. So in the music world, in the film world, there's very distinct groups. And I'm in the indie music group that are all Grammy members. So we help each other um, you know, promote our work, vote for our work you know, get it out there to people. And it's a worldwide um, group. Those groups are worldwide and it's really important because you need that type of support in that environment. So um, yeah, so for film and music, it's a little different than the websites. The websites are there, but we get a lot of traffic um, on these on these other sites too, so. I, for one, find it amazing that we can post some of our best content and it will get almost no notice, but we post a funny meme 
and yeah. it will be shared a billion times. Yeah. So if you're trying to if you're trying to build your 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 uh, Facebook group or your Twitter following or you know whatever quickly, find something funny. Put your URL in the corner and post it. It doesn't <laughs> matter if it's frivolous, and it will you'll get. You'll be able to uh, go through the likes list on that and mine that sucker and invite everybody, and we've uh, that's worked out very well for us. We've got almost ten thousand followers on Facebook doing that. Okay, uh, well, and then uh, Gene, you also had um, you told me once of the value of your of the amount of return you got on a single fetz uh, on a single fetz uh, when you did the oh, win yeah. a fetz thing. Oh, yeah. So is there, any, I, that was a couple of years ago, and I think it was a very, very smart move on your point. Is there any, is that now invalidated because you told me the story five years ago? Is there parts of that oh, that would no, still be no, relevant that, now? That, that trick works great. If you can find something that ties into uh, something that your fan base is interested in. And oh, yeah, I, tell, what, what did you do with the fest? Because I, I uh, so. said, we said uh, 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 the next, uh, uh, between here and two weeks from now, uh, anybody who signs up for our Facebook group uh, is eligible to win a Doctor Who Fez, and we're going to pick three people. And it cost us, I think, forty-five dollars in Doctor Who Fezes, and we got uh, fifteen hundred signups. You know, you can't Facebook ads aren't don't work that well. So I mean, it, it worked great, and uh, yeah. And we did we did it again with uh, uh, good omens and the the sunglasses. And we just you know we sign up for the Krypton Radio Patreon campaign and get a pair of these. Mm -hmm. And uh, they went they went ape nuts over these. And these they're not expensive, and uh, you can get a big rise out of offering small prizes. Just because if, if it's something cool, it doesn't matter if it's cheap. Nice. Okay, I think we've got everyone in. Um, Jane, Jim, you are you're you're up. Well, could I ask Rena a question though? I'm just because I just sat here and I poo pooed TikTok. Rena, how are you? What is it that you're putting on TikTok to be so successful? I am really curious. So, um. Okay. So there's. The main thing is the kids I shoot videos in are dancers. There you go. Okay. <laughs> so I wrote a song called Six Feet Away, and we have a lot of dancing. And then we also have unicycling, and that's also to music. So it worked really well for TikTok. So actually, we did a re-edit um, of the best 30 seconds in a three-minute piece, and it worked beautifully. What's the maximum length that a TikTok video can One be? minute. So One we minute. did 30 that's seconds. Right. You know, when you watch, um, I'm in, I've been a videographer in the dance world for like 25 years. So like, I know everybody in that world. So the really most famous dancers do a lot of 30 second things almost every day. So, so it really is short attention span theater. Yes, it is. So, wow. so, com so combining Rena, what Rena said with what, with what Jean did, when we get back to convention season, just like these little video clips that you can just pull of a, one of a million different things at a convention can be thrown on TikTok mm. would be something you could throw on TikTok, right, Rena? Like a yeah, I mean, costume or this, or, is, or am I missing the point? Yeah, I mean, you want to do something with motion. Um, so like, you know, like you're, you're walking around and, and then all of a sudden like you spread out. I mean, there's some kind of visual fun thing that you did in 30 seconds. Okay. It wouldn't be, Which, just be like a 30 second interview. Nobody watches that on TikTok because well, it's all about, oh, that was so cool. Or like, like, let's say you, you like, you had superhero glasses from your five favorite ones, like, you know, and you did it to music. It's always something like that where it's part of your brand, but it's something where somebody would have a fun motion element in, a, in that 30 second to one minute time, okay. which really is a lot of time to promote. But the thing about it, it's so huge that Kids are running around buying mansions together in LA right now that are TikTok stars. And then um, the pop stations are picking up those TikTok songs and then playing the full version on the radio. And then now the artists are coming back and making a lot of money. It's it's huge. Wow. I really have to rethink all this. 
Yeah, I did so some, like, some motion. The then. pandemic, because I'm like, I don't know what this is. Like, I'm not doing it. And the kids forced me to like, okay, we're going to sit down and do it. And so we were like in the hallway, we were flying on brooms, like in Harry Potter, which was like an optical illusion with like a blanket and a broom and a chair. And we got like a whole, like hundreds of views in like the first like hour. Like, and that's <laughs> where I was going to go. Like awesome. I was going to take onto that. I think the, the point that I was going to bring up um, how you have to rethink your own, you get a re, we as the con guys, so 50% of what we do is we attend the conventions, we meet people and we do panels and, and different things at the conventions. And that's kind of how we grow our brand. But once we got shut, once the world shut down, you, you're definitely, everything's online. So what you just said was so interesting to me that um, like almost you took this, the pandemic, although it's a bad thing, you created something really cool during the pandemic that do you, for us, we're trying to figure out things that we're doing now that we will continue after once the world returns to whatever normal will look like on the other side of this. For us, we've had to shift a little bit. We, on our weekly podcast, instead of doing news and, and views from the convention, we, um, we decided to shift a little bit and we became a, this was Luke's idea. He said, let's start doing panels. Let's start, since all the panels have been canceled at all the different conventions, let's start producing panels each week on our podcast so we kind of recreate for sort of that convention feel like yesterday we did a panel um with the the creator of the comic book canto he just which got nominated for an eisner award so he kind of took us through and then he was discussing the the state of the comic book industry right now there's both good news and bad news there the week before we did um black lives within the comics industry and the fandom industry you know to, to kind of so we were like doing panels that you'll see showing up but we're also it's probably going to affect the way once we return to being able to get back out and we're going to still continue that. So it's because it is something, Luke, don't you think it's like something that has become very successful for us as a podcasting group? Yeah, we're totally going to do that. Cause I think we were even thinking of it when we were still in the studio, but now with the opportunities with zoom and getting more people like if those are still the type of interviews we can only get people. Cause a lot of people can't just fly in for an interview. We'd mm -hmm. like to keep somewhat of a Zoom aspect, but as much as we can, we still like to kind of bring people in the studios to kind of do our, our panel. And Luke usually books our panels and he's been able to book us like some really big guests and like probably some of our most successful panels we've ever had. What? But I do have a question. I just want to throw this out to, to the, the panel, everybody here. What is it that is happening right now in the lockdown that you think will permanently affect the way you do business and that you'll carry over after we get through the... Oh, I have a big one. Yeah. So like U-Hauls of pull up to your house and your kids throw all their stuff back in it. <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't know if that's going to reverse, but if anyways, it's fun. But just I one big thing is I haven't had time um, to go to like a lot of these conventions that are some of the music ones that I do that are professionals in my genre that happen in Canada and in Europe. But now they're online. So like I'm signing up for them and I'm willing, even willing to pay for them because now I can do interface with people that the best in the industry and for what I do and for like 500 bucks and spend a whole week with them. Mm -hmm. um, I hope that doesn't change because it gives access to a lot more people who can't just leave their jobs all the time and just hop over to one of these international conventions. I think that's one of my favorite things that's going on. And just one other quick thing is um, like my access to equipment and collaboration has just skyrocketed. Um, you know, if I want, I have thousands of dollars of lenses just in my house now from all the people living here. I, so I've, I did a principal photo shoot for a movie that they're putting out posters on and I didn't even plan that. I just have all this equipment now. Um, collaborating with- oh, That's your kids, just, right? Yeah. So, yeah. So I have one that's a photographer, but while they're working, I'm out doing art now. So I'm just taking advantage of everything I can. And then really um, I'm behind, but I want to spend more time learning you know, getting better at a couple of the things, which I think I'll have time to do while I'm editing the stuntman. But um, yeah, those are a few of the things that I don't think are gonna leave. Or I think just the nature of kids and work and where they gotta be. And you just handed them what they wanted. They wanna be digital nomads and run around. So you just handed them less responsibility and more ability in the future to be free. So that's gonna be hard to reverse, right? Mm -hmm. Um, okay, so one one quick thing that I would say just very, very quickly uh, that are on my pre-notes is that as you have a lot of these um, softwares and platforms and all of that, 
there's there's a lot of times where it's going to be useful for you in ways that wasn't attend, intended and that's always a really and that's always um you know it's like oh well i can use that but not in the way that they were meaning um like for us for one example what we're not having comic-con this year obviously San Diego comic-con but what we were gonna what i realized last year at comic-con i was getting these ad, the things for ad for ads and it was like you can x amount of people within a mile x amount of people within two miles you can do and i'm just within a mile and i was like well this, I, I do get these all the time I'm like this is useless to me i'm that no one in no one in, in orange county is within a mile i'm not a brick and mortar store what i realized last year when i was checking my facebook on the con floor kind of looked around i was like yeah a mile this room is a mile this room is a half of a mile so what we were going to do is do the facebook ads for our booth location within the mile distance that would then be fed to the attendees where it was just like you know so when they're on the other side of the room which is i believe it's a half mile i think a quarter or a half mile if you're on the other side of the room, you will, you will get my ad with the booth number on it going, hey, you should be over here. And we were going to use the, the ad, that, lo, that location element for the people that are in the same room because the room, because that convention room is just one, one quarter of a mile by, I think, half or three quarters is like, huge. So, you know, the location outside of that convention week is useless to me. But it was, we were thinking, hey, anyone checking their Facebook in this room for five days, uh, now it's useful. So when you're going to look at some of the stuff up, uh, look, look at this, go, how is how can I use this for where I'm at, where it might not have mean, might not be meant for that. So there's a lot of times when just a little bit of a switch ends up being quite useful. Um, I think yeah. a, big, a big change that we're looking at is kind of going back to the conventions and networking. Um, I used to do a convention a week and not just in the comic book world, but all of my other industries that I worked in and uh, CES is coming up the consumer electronics show in January. They have announced it's on, but they've been flooding me with surveys because I said, I'm going to go. Um, and it's going to be a much, much, much different world to the point of one of the questions they asked was banning business cards and handshakes completely across the board at the convention doubling the size of the, the, the aisles at the convention. They're asking all these questions because there won't be as many people there. We know that already. So there's going to be a major cultural change that's going to happen at all conventions. And quite frankly, I don't think most conventions are going to survive, both on the comic book side as well as non-comic book. Um, just the sheer amount of cash that it takes to float these an extra year, um, it's just not going to happen. And we're already seeing it um, in some of the conventions. They're just shutting down at this point. So that's a that's a loss on my part because I generated a lot of, basically a lot of work from the conventions, not so much on the comic book side, but all my other shows that I went to, all my industry people that I met with, it was where I did business uh, in person. So that's a major change on my part is how do I go digital and get the same effectiveness? And that's not an answer I have right now. I have not figured out how to make that happen in the same way. We can make it happen, but it's much different when I sit down at dinner with my salespeople and versus a Zoom call. Um, there's a major difference there. And also too, the Zoom call is gonna take over. I see more and more people and Rena kind of alluded to it where we have a generation of people who never wanted to be in the office. Those offices are gonna disappear. As bigger companies keep people at home, they're gonna start breaking leases and shutting down facilities. And just the way we interact is gonna be more like what we're doing right now. Uh, you know, love it or hate it, we're all going to have to learn to do it in some way or another. Well, with 80% of the overhead of keeping an employee on premises being maintain, maintaining the physical facility, uh, maintaining the, uh, the tools that that person uses, and paying for the insurance coverage that it takes for that person to be there to cover the liability of having a, a human body in that space. Uh, I'm frankly surprised that businesses hadn't been jumping on this bandwagon a lot sooner than COVID-19. Yeah, I just think they just thought that people were going to be less productive and it turned out to not be true. Yeah, exactly. it's, it's exactly not. the opposite. You're more productive when you're not distracted with 12 people sitting around wanting to know if you want to go grab a snake, a snack and just a snake. hang out around the I agree. I, I agree. My, my wife and I, and this is the only thing I'll say, my wife and I have been talking about this, that we don't think 
there's been the tools to work at home for two decades properly. Right. And it, it, they've been there, but they haven't been used in my life. I, we don't think that that the way we work is going to be the same at after after this pandemic. I, I think there's right. going to be a fundamental shift in how you in, in what you when you say work in 2021 2022. I think that's going to be a fundamental difference of definition than all the way up to 2019. I think it's because uh, I think part of the reason why we're seeing a reticence on the part of uh, uh, upper management and you know middle management to greenlight this stuff is that they're all from the the previous generation of managerial techniques. Yep. Well, they 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 measure your productivity by the number of hours you put in, not by the amount of work you get done. Yep. Uh, you're not being productive just because you're staring at a computer screen. Type yeah, and, and they're they're the like a flying elbows school of management. Mm -hmm. If they don't see flying elbows, they have no idea if you're doing your your stuff or not because they don't know how to uh, they don't know how to manage um, a workflow apart from being able to eyeball somebody mm -hmm. and sneak up behind them and see if they're actually working. Yep. But uh, the other thing that that uh, I wanted to address that that Sean brought up was that uh, you know how this is all going to change how we all work. Well. Krypton Radio has been sort of a virtual thing the entire time. And it's, it's for us, since we don't have a physical product, we don't get a, a, we don't get a financial reward for showing up at conventions and, and, and hiring a booth. That's just cash out and we don't get an ROI on it. Uh, so having all of this suddenly go, oh, poof, the conventions are gone. It's all virtual now. We're in our element. <laughs> this is, we're already radio. It doesn't. <laughs> and it's helping us too. Like we have a, a, we have a show that we're doing this week where we have some of the creative team and actors from a movie called Followed, which this past week was the number one movie in the country. And I, I don't know if anyone has heard of it, but they're, they're going to be part of it. Yeah, they're going to be guests on our show. They're based up in Santa Barbara. We're down in Hollywood. We never would have been able to do that if we were doing the old model of meet us at the studio to do to do this. So this is probably changing a little bit of how we do our our podcast going forward. Like it's a it's a new way to get guests. And I, I completely agree with you, Gene, about um, I I have management that I work with that are very resistant about people working from home because they can't see what you're doing. Even though your job is 100%, you're able to do it from home. They've been forced to do it, and guess what? Productivity is going up. So what's going to happen? And, and the overheads have gone down. I do know that, and I'm not going to say the, the companies. There's companies that I work with that are letting go of, of real estate and um, right now because they're – plus you get um, tax incentives from the state of California, the fewer people you have on, driving on the road. So it's a good thing all around. Oh, right. Yeah. Well, I know there's no you one way U hauls available because they've all driven from LA to Nevada and Arizona. So if you want <laughs> yeah, suckers, you go yeah that, I, I read about that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it, it it all the U hauls are leaving California. That is that is true. That, that's been going. That's been happening for about two or three years now. So yeah. yeah. So. We're coming close to the end of our hour, and I uh, well, not the end of the hour, but we do have one more step at the end of the free form discussion. Well, end of what we were doing. Okay. Um, and I was going to be um, cutting off about a minute, so we'll uh, jump in a bit early at this point. Um, tw uh, because every because 2020 is canceled event wise already. I mean, it's June, and it's June, and and, it, and there's nothing going on through December. Um, online web websites, social media is 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 being used in ways that in numbers that never before seen, and this is this is this this can be actually measured in the issues that carriers are having, the problems that the carriers are having with bandwidth and internet usage and you know all of this. So there is a actual measurement as to people are doing more online. So that, that's not just theory. Uh, so because of that, uh, the social media is always good, but as and I said this a very 
brushed over we did last time we talked, but I thought it was a phenomenal point, especially with the experts that are here. Ha I, having a website 2020 moving on, but especially for the next eight months, eight to 10 months, is going to be more valuable than even the valuable it's been previous to March. So having a website with your stuff, having a simple website, having something small, something, anything up where you can go, this is my footprint, where I don't have to worry about a company, you know, minimalizing or, or algor algorithming me out of exposure. This is where I'm at. This is who I am. This little footprint is going to be more important now for probably, I would guess, I'm just guessing, the next eight to 10 months, more, more so than ever. So we've got people that know, people that have written books and the whole degrees on about websites. So the open discussion for the remainder of the time is, uh, I'm, I've never built a website. I want to build a website. Help me out. That's, your, that's the person for you to talk to for the next 15, 20 minutes. <laughs> I, I have an idea just because I have, you know, a business website that's very heavy, um, you know, AWS and all that, but that, you know, it's a hundred thousand dollar thing, but I'll tell you, I've got two things for personal stuff. One is WordPress, which I just pay $10 a month or something that just to get my, my security and put up all my videos and things, but my, all my friends that are doing sales on there are using something like Shopify because really one reason is security. So I've had so many people um, before they did that get hacked. Um, there's a lot of competition now with selling product online. And so I would say if you're selling something, whether it's artwork or something like that, where you're going to be doing shipping that do not, I would recommend not using WordPress for that unless you're really good at the security because um, those, those are the things that are tough. When it happens, you got to take your whole site down. And I think that's like the biggest lesson that I've learned on, on things that you sell. Now, if you're just, if you're showcasing stuff that you do, like I use a combination of WordPress and I use IMDB and plus my Grammy site to do all of that. And that's fine. I'm not selling things on those are just more of a, of a presence. Well, and I, so. and I think that's the point here is a lot of the people that are going to be watching this and come to our other panel. They're artists, they're writers, they're people who are doing creative work. And it really comes down to not so much a website, and I taught web design for the last 20 years and WordPress as well since the early days. I don't have a site anymore. I, I don't have anything, actually. I've eliminated all of my websites. Um, I have a portfolio uh, because what I do, it's not so much, well, and I lie about that. Two CPR group has one, but we're actually gonna strip it down over the next month to the bare minimum. All we care about is what is being presented online. Is it key to what we're selling? I'll just call it that for the moment. Uh, but it is our brand. So on a personal standpoint, I have my URL. And so that was where I wanted to start with this is just go buy one on Google domains or wherever between 10 and $15 a year is what you're looking at. At least get something. Um, in a lot of cases, though, most of my students that I teach, they don't even buy that. They're going online now. And we push them to, first of all, getting your LinkedIn stuff together. LinkedIn has a portfolio uh, area. You can post all of your work in LinkedIn. They give you a URL. It's whatever LinkedIn slash, you know, your name or whatever it is. Um, and that's going to probably move up in your Google hits quicker than anything else as well. So you'll get to the top that way with your stuff. But then we push them now to, if they really want to build a website to a Wix, and Wix is one of many, many website builders out there. But, you know, that's one and something they can go in and build quickly. But we're pushing more and more to Behance, and this isn't my, just my Adobe side of the world here, but Behance, if you go take a look, it's free, it's from Adobe, it's what I use. So if you type in my URL, glumus.com, it takes you to my Behance site right off the bat. How do you spell that? Uh, B-E and then Hance, so B-E-H-A-N-C-E dot net. And I'm gonna do something right here because I do have control over the video. <laughs> Sorry, everyone else can't see it, but I just pulled up my Behance site. It's the Creative Cloud, though, right? It is, but it's free. So it is part of the Creative Cloud, but it is 100% free. And what's really neat about it, too, is um, once you have all your work up, and once again, sorry to everyone on Zoom, you're not seeing my screen, but the, the viewers are. Um, all my work's up here. I have it built out basically by project. 
and you click on it. The cool thing is you can copy and paste these URLs and put them into your LinkedIn portfolio. So now you have those two things linked. And if you really want a website, there is another product called Adobe Portfolio, which is free. It generates your entire portfolio from your Behance site. So it'll actually generate a website that is HTML versus really this is a internal hosting. But um, I just, I switched that over now. Sorry, I'm gonna transition back um, on the Behance side. And I do that with my students because one, it's free. Two, it has all your stats, all your works up there. And I notice too, when I post something on Behance, uh, be, once again, because of my name, things pop up on my Google searches because I watch everything within 24 hours. All of a sudden, my portfolio stuff that's in Behance, if it's connected to me, is coming up in the searches very quickly. It's great if you're a writer, you can put up all your text. If you're a video person, you embed all your YouTube videos in there. If you're audio, same thing, you can embed everything or you upload your images. So it's not just for an illustrator or a photographer. It's really for anyone who need, needs to build a quick portfolio. Um, so is this something that people can go and for, like if I wanted to go and look at a bunch of artists to work with, is it like something you can peruse a lot of different portfolios? So when you're uploading your work, you actually tell what program you built it in, what genre it's in. So if it's writing or if it's editing and you can go in and search this stuff. So if you got a chance, go in just take a look. There's, you have your full resume in here as well. You can upload your whole resume, the whole nine yards. It's a very powerful piece of um, software. I shouldn't say software, it's online, but it is free. It's Adobe, it's not gonna go anywhere, hopefully. Software as a service, it's software. Yeah, it's software as a service. And my big thing is I have WordPress forever. I still use it, but as it grew, it just, why, the question you need to ask yourself is, what do you need to promote yourself? And do you need to spend hours installing or uploading or even wordpress.com, which is free as well, or a paid version, is how much content do you actually have too? And I think people bite off more than they can chew. I know in one of our previous uh, panels, um, Gene brought it up is they leave Lorem Ipsen up on the page or they leave placeholders. If all it takes is a single page to promote yourself and have all your work up there, start with that. Um, concentrate more. And this is my last thing I wanted to throw in here, especially with the people who are just starting out. You're listening to this going, well, I don't have any of these things. I don't know Twitter. I don't know any of these. Start simple. Get a good headshot. Take a photo or hire an illustrator to do an illustration of you. You know, like your con guy stuff. Use that as your, your, your profile picture. Get that done. There is no excuse for it anymore. You have a phone. Go on YouTube. Watch a video on how to shoot a good, pro, uh, a good portrait uh, off your iPhone. Second, a good write-up with your keywords, a short, a medium, and long. You're going to use that as your bio on Twitter, on Facebook, on TikTok. Doesn't matter where you're going. Goes back to what I said at the end, consistency. And then really sitting down and going through your portfolio. Deciding what goes in, what is stays out. Looking at all the work you've done. So let's say you're a writer. Go find every article you ever wrote online. Get copies of it. Put links up. You know, feedback to it. If you're an artist, pull all of your digital work, uh, take photos of all your printed work, get all those things together. And if you're involved in IP and especially things that are copyrighted and trademarked, now is the time to do it. Uh, I know Rena went through and did that right at the beginning of the pandemic. Yeah. I just did that with voices. We got our trademark stuff done. It cost me a little bit of money, which was fine, but a standard copyright is $65. So if you've written a book or you've done a song or something, just do it get all of your stuff together in one place. Now you have everything you need to start branding yourself. It will evolve, it's, it's never finished. But having all those things together, then you can move on to Twitter, then you can move on to Facebook because now you have content to put on those sites and you have somewhere to go back to. Um, you know, you have your YouTube and like for me, it's really just my Behance and my YouTube stuff. And that's it, that's all I've got up there now. And those are the two places I point everyone to. Which, which yeah, which brings me to uh, the point I wanted to make, which was uh, you, if you want to have a really successful Patreon campaign, for example, whatever you do has to kind of live there. That has to be your portal. If you want to use, uh, if you're an artist and uh, you want to uh, showcase your stuff, DeviantArt is a great place to do it. Uh, Behance is a great place to do it. But you have to 
look at where the people you want to talk to are going and go there and build there and have that be the center of your online presence. And then you can build it out from there. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's, it's, it used to be that you, would oh, I'm going to go online. I'm going to build a website because that was the only answer you had. And that's no longer true. And that hasn't been true for a very long time. I think it's important to differentiate though, Gene, like you have a, your website is also like, let's differentiate between the content which we're trying to promote, which is our websites, our websites and our brand from our personal, what Sean was talking about, how we present ourselves to the world. So, so I don't want anyone to get confused about what we're talking about there. Like right. runby.com is definitely, it is a website and it cannot, and it exists all over social media, but it, the websites, they anchor for that. Right. You have, an, you have an, that's what I'm getting at. You have an anchor point. Correct. The thing that everything else sort of rotates around. And uh, for TikTok stars, that's going to be TikTok. For uh, um, uh, a vlogger, it's going to be probably YouTube. But there are some who center their efforts on, um, uh, what's it called? Uh, well, Mixer, which just rolled over and died. Microsoft is closing it. Yeah. Uh, but, or Twitch. Mm -hmm. and, and they build they build their little empire there but the thing is that you have to pick a spot don't spread yourself too thin when you start out uh make sure that you have your branding figured out as in you know the graphics and your slogans and the the clips of information that go with whatever it is you're building so that you can uh rearrange them into whatever format you need and spread them out as you expand but find the people you want to talk to first and figure out where they are and go there and, uh, and then build outwards. It's, and sometimes the answer is not having your own website. Okay, we're, um, we've, still got, we've still got two people to get in before we go. So um, Rena, I don't want to miss you again. So Rena and then Luke, and then I think we're closing. We're going to close up at that point. See, I, I mean, I pretty much covered it as far as branding, but. Um, what about websites, I mean? Art okay. and upper, we, we moved on from websites, but they place websites generally, sorry, go. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I've probably spent the most time probably in my whole life on YouTube. So I have several channels, um, several, and even placeholder channels. And I don't think this time I'm going to make websites to go with them. I'm just going to have channels on YouTube because I don't think my audience on those are going to be on looking at my website. They're going to just go right, right to my YouTube and watch content. And then for what I do in editing, I'm putting YouTube shows together to sell to Netflix or Amazon Prime or Quibi or one of those. That's my other place where content will go to. So, so yeah, that's changing for me, definitely. Okay, Luke? Yeah, I just kind of agree. It, it depends on your audience and stuff. Like us being kind of like a con type website or kind of like talk about whether it's the whore with scare guy or whether it's the con guy. I think it's good that we still have that because like we were saying, it kind of unifies everything. But something we are also looking at is like, how do we include like collectibles and other stuff that, you know, people want to purchase? Like we're gathering kind of like the best things of the con world out there. So I think it's a like to have like a website like ours, I mean, like we're constantly trying to think of like new ways of like, how do we take it and kind of reach our audience or kind of bring them back there. What? I never collect anything. We got more than this. talking about. <laughs> you, you'll find out for the people that watch on a consistent basis, Rena loves Batman. So that's just, you know. <laughs> There's um, a never ending stream of fun that I have. Of Batman. Love that. Oh. <laughs> Irina, what do you think about Michael Keaton coming back? Uh, it's, that's amazing. I love Michael Keaton. So yes, that's, that is, by the way, still a rumor. That is not confirmed. We've uh, he's in talk. Uh, yeah, I just yeah. have my staff uh, run this one down, and uh, that's a rumor. Well, we'll see. I, we'll see what happens. Um, when he goes to the guy show, we'll find out for real. That's right. We'll, we'll help you. Out. 
<laughs> They'll break the news. Um, and uh, and I, I'm sure if the news is broken, it will be one of the two website people that we've got on right now. So, uh, uh, okay, we're going to close up the this um, this panel about online branding and professionalism. Uh, for the people watching, we are going to be expanding over this year, um, taking our own advice. So uh, you'll be seeing more of these pop up over the course of the year. Thank you for being with us for the last dozen years or so for the people that have been and now the people that can't make it to the panels will be able to see us online. And and as, as a closing note, uh, it's kind of a good example of the experts are on here. I asked a question about websites and then everyone turned that question on its ear and said, no, that's not, no. <laughs> so uh, so that, 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 that's, that's the reason why we have these people on here. Thank you for, um, thank you for coming. We, uh, we don't have any particular email or uh, any particular uh, groups or websites on this panel to talk about. Hopefully next time we'll be able to direct you to those, but thank you for joining us. Have a wonderful time and, uh, do your best this year not to not to go crazy and stay sane.